Hi everybody, my name's Colin Way. Welcome to my workshop. Today we're going to look at your first turning tool set. You know what it's like, you get your first lathe home, you're all excited, you want to make a project, but you're not quite sure which tool to pick up first. Well, let's have a look through the tools and see exactly what each one can do. Okay, so we're going to start with the roughing gouge. Now, the roughing gouge is used to take corners off a timber or to reduce the size of your blank. We're then going to move on to the skew chisel. The skew chisel is responsible for cleaning up the surface left by a roughing gouge um, or generally creating things like V-cuts and rolling beads and that sort of thing. We can then move on to a spindle gouge. Spindle gouge is, is used primarily for spindle work, so between centres, and can be used for forming coves and beads. A good all-round chisel, that one. And then our round nose scraper. So again, for things like coves, insides of boxes, insides of bowls, that sort of thing. We're then on to a bowl gouge. Now, as the name suggests, it's more commonly used on bowls, but we're going to use it today to create some coves and some sweeping curves. And then finally, we're going to look at the parting tool. Parting tools, as its name suggests, is used for parting off, but also is good for sizing tenons with the um, aid of a set of calipers. Okay, so we're going to start with the roughing gouge. Remember, its job is to take all those corners off and get this piece down to around cylindrical shape. So here we go, 1600 revs. Stop the lathe, move the, tail, the tool rest along, check your corners, start the lathe and rough down your next section. Okay, so that's roughed down to a cylinder, but the roughing gouge doesn't leave a particularly good finish. So we're gonna use the skew chisel. The skew chisel in this mode is gonna be planing. So we're gonna use it like a hand plane to give us a nice smooth surface before we then use it to do some detail work. And here goes. Okay, so with the skew chisel, we just need to raise the tool rest, this time to slightly above the center point. Speed is fine, but I'm just checking the center. So just tightening up a little bit. Now we can raise the tool rest, or oh, now we've raised the tool rest, we can um, turn the machine on, but look, we've got a knot there, so it's just to be aware of things like that. Speed is still 1600. Rub the bevel, lift the handle gently, run along the tool rest, and again. And we can go one way, turn around and come back the other. And we'll stop there just to show you that surface. Okay, so we've planed down the surface, so now we're free to start shaping. So we're going to use the skew chisel again and the longer point to create what we call V-cuts. And they're the start of bead forming or cove making. So I'm going to have a flat section here on my table leg and we're going to put our first V-cut in around about here. Okay, so using the long point, we're going to make one line and now we're going to slightly angle the tool and push forward either side of that line. Another one here. And that gives us a really nice neat V ready to start shaping beads and coves and shoulders. Okay, so now I'm gonna put a shoulder here. So I'm gonna roll what we call a bead, and I'm gonna do one with the heel of the skew and one with the spindle gouge in a moment. So let's do the one with the skew first. And using the heel, I'm just gonna drop the heel in and rotate over. And this is gonna be the shoulder at the top of the main part of the leg. So we're rotating all the way over down to the bottom of the V. There we are, all the way down.
Okay, so next on to the spindle gouge. We're gonna use a spindle gouge here to roll this bead. So this will be a main feature of the top of this leg. So we're gonna turn the machine on. Now I'm just gonna put a pencil mark where I think center, the high spot of that bead's gonna be there. Now we can start rolling with the spindle. Okay, so we're gonna start upright with the, with the flute and the bevel rubbing. And again, rotate into the V. Same on the other side. Just down to the bottom of that V cut. Okay, so now we're gonna combine those last three tools together and we're gonna rough down, skew cut, and then put a V in and start shaping some, um, some convex curves for a foot before we start looking at our next tool, which will be the bowl gouge. Okay, so we're gonna start by roughing some diameter away from here. Remember, roughing gouge is not just for taking corners off, but for taking stock away. So that should be about enough. So now we'll go back to the skew, raise the tool rest above center, clean up that, that end. Get that knot on the end there. Now I'm gonna cut my foot or position my foot, so V cut. Nice deep one here. And we're gonna use the skew then to roll the shoulder. And then spindle gouge. And we're gonna roll a little convex curve in here. Okay, so next, the bowl gouge. We're gonna do two curves with the bowl gouge, a convex curve on the foot and a concave here, in the, what will be the narrowest part of the leg. Okay, so I've lowered the tool rest and I'm gonna use the bevel to rub here, so the back of the tool, foot facing direction of travel. In this case, about two o'clock. Remembering that knot in the end, so just a little bit easier when you get to the edge. Rub in the bevel and swinging the hand around to keep the curve flowing. One more of those. There we are. Next, the cove. So the opposite of what we've just done, we've just done the convex there. Now we come back with a cove. So I'm gonna start away from where I wanna end up. I wanna end up there. We're gonna make several scoops. So watch the handle move. I'm swinging around, swinging around. Notice the flute now facing the other direction as I'm moving in the other direction. And there we are, that's the narrowest part of that leg now. You can start, start to see the leg emerge. Okay, so before we look at the final two tools, we're just gonna rough this section down and clean that up. Then that's the whole middle section finished. So here goes, so with the roughing gouge first, Raise the tool rest up for the skew, remember. And we'll just do a nice little finishing cut. And now all that's left is a little bit of detail here, and we're gonna put a, um, a tenon on this side. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the round nose scraper. Now the scraper family are one of the only tools that you use with the handle high. So what we need to do, adjust the tool rest into position and lower it down. So we're back, back down below center again. And I'm just gonna put a simple cove in here with this one. So up with the handle. There we are, nice little feature in the bottom of the foot. Okay, so the final tool we're gonna to look at is the parting tool. And in this instance, we're gonna create a tenon. Um, I've sized the calipers to 45 millimeters. We hop the tool rest just below center. So here goes, sizing a tenon. So let's say my tenon needs to be that deep. We're gonna start with our first cut on the shoulder. 
You then use your calipers to size that cup. They're set for 45 mil. There we are. So that's 45, so we can do that again. So there we have a nice, accurate 45 mil tenon ready to go into your 45 millimeter hole. So there you go, guys. That's some of the basic cuts from the beginner tool set. There's obviously a lot more it can do, but if you found this useful, look out for more videos from us to help you on your wood turning journey. And thanks for watching.